Hello and welcome to Tushka Training. We're back in Hip Film 2 Ultimate. We created a Type 1 bullet hole yesterday, which was for metal. Uh, we created a Type 2 bullet hole today, uh, which was for rock and concrete, that sort of thing. Uh, and now, hopefully, I think this will be the final bullet hole. Um, there's a possibility that paper could be useful as well, but we'll see about that. Uh, this one being um, glass. So we're going to create a, a procedural glass bullet hole. First thing we're going to do is create a new composite shot. We'll call this bullet hole uh, glass 512. Now, normally I do these at 256 because... The um, size is not that important on bullet holes. However, the way this is made, um, some of the effects do not work well at two, 256. They work a lot better at 512. Also, it gives you a lot more leeway in terms of size in your actual composite because sometimes you're going to want to create a, a, a glass bullet hole that's got bigger cracks than if it was on rock or concrete because glass is going to crack quite heavily. Um, a bullet hole in glass doesn't crack as much as you might think simply because of the velocity of the shell, but it's still nice to have some some distance there on the cracks themselves. So we'll create that composite shot. Uh, next thing we're going to do is create a grade layer, uh, not a plane this time. We don't need to put a test background in this time either. Um, the black will work fine. We're going to rename this grade as bullet hole glass. Now we'll get rid of the glass and we'll just go with cracks. Um, we're going to go to one of our favorite effects at the moment, why it's called lightning and electricity. I still don't understand, even an hour later, after the last time I didn't understand. Uh, so we're going to grab this down, we'll pull this, pull this here like so. As you can see, the lightning's already on screen. Uh, we're going to use the, uh, the controls just to pull it into shape ever so slightly, just so we've got a, a semblance of an idea of whereabouts we want to set these settings right this here needs to be minus 256 exactly and this wants to be 256 exactly and what that does basically is it sets the lightning perfectly from edge to edge which is something you are going to need later so um, with the uh, twitch scale this is something that we will mess with later again the first thing we're going to do is go to animation. We're going to bring the speed down so it's actually not a moving shot anymore. Uh, with the width, I tested this a moment ago and uh, 0 0.2 looked quite nice. Um, so we're going to go with 0 0.2 there. We're going to bring the branches down. We're going to close off mirror angle so they're all just on the one side of the lightning. Then we're going to bring that to 90 like so. We're going to go to glow and turn the opacity right down. Um, we haven't actually set the height here yet, so we, let's just set it at something basic like so. Um, these will be adjustable again later, and you'll see why uh, this gap here is actually your bullet hole. Uh, these are the cracks. So if we bring the quantity of the cracks up a bit, we'll go with that for now. We'll boost the max scale ever so slightly like so uh, and then we'll just we'll start working on the actual look of it itself um, by bringing the polar warp down and dropping it straight on and there you go we've got our bullet hole we can mess with the twitch like so or the wave uh, I don't really like the wave too much what it what it does whereas the twitch a slight bit of twitch just adds a bit of non linearity to all the bits here uh, and it looks quite quite good i have to say it looks quite good actually as it goes and that's that, that's that's pretty much the bullet hole done again you can uh create duplicates of this and seed it like so if needs be very very quick to do it with this one um we'll just uh do a quick example if we go to media we'll create a new composite shot uh, composite shot we'll call this uh, shot container as per usual and um, we're going to flick this off custom and go back to 1080p like so i'm going to create that and we'll bring in a picture 
of a window uh, now um, I've just realized I haven't actually took any pictures of windows um, we'll bring this shot in um, we'll, we'll just shrink this down a little bit actually you know what why not we'll uh, we'll we'll create a quick window in uh, in hit film right here and there uh, it's easy enough to do. Uh, we'll just pop a grade layer there. I'm not going to bother naming this too much, so um, I'm just going to fire through this really quickly. And uh, we're going to create a very, very quick, but probably not a very good, but a very quick window. Uh, we're going to bring up point one and point two here. We're going to zero these two out. Uh, basically, what that does is it centers your grid. Uh, so now, when you um, you can actually bring this down here. Um, and I'll just put that to two like so. Uh, and we'll boost this out to, again, we'll go for two. We'll go for a, a four pane window like that. We'll boost the radius a bit to give it a bit of a frame. Um, Put that on normal, like so. Uh, we'll create a new plane here, black. Uh, we'll go to the transform controls on that. Change the scale here to a 1%. Uh, it's a bit thick. Uh, we'll call it 0 0.5. That's a nice little cut in the middle of the window there. Maybe, maybe a little bit less. That'll do you. Um, we'll create another new layer. We'll just add a few, few bits in just to uh, just to make it look a little bit more like a window. So uh, if we scale this down, actually, let's just type in two there, like so. Bring this across. Actually, we'll leave that exactly where it is for the moment. Um, we'll create a new plane again. This time we're going to make it white. Uh, we're going to transform this down to uh, 1.9. Uh, we'll probably go 1.8 actually. Like so. Uh, we're going to parent that to new plane 2, which is the one I just created, and pull them over there, like so. It's just some kind of silly hinge. Um, well, what we'll actually do, actually, is we'll, uh, we'll make that into a composite shot. Duplicate it. And we'll just bring it down. Like so. We'll duplicate that again. And we'll bring it over to this side. Again, I'm doing this very quick just to just to just to get a, a quick background shot to uh background plate to actually put uh to to put this on so um to put the the gunshot onto um it's not really that important it's, it's not a, a great thing actually i'm not going to go any further with this we'll we'll leave that as is uh, we've got the shot container there. Go to our media. We'll pull in the bullet hole glass. It's a little bit large. A little bit too large, really, but there you go. We'll just transform that down quickly. And you have a quick glass procedural bullet hole. The usual suspect of duplicate. 
move, duplicate, move, zoom in a bit on the timeline, pull this over, pull that over, select them all, move them all over ever so slightly, so you start with your blank plate, and we've got some bullet holes. Again, it's the best way to duplicate is to duplicate up here. And once you duplicate up here, you can drag this straight into your shot. Go back in, double click it, go back into your composite. And then when you click on lightning, you can just seed it there to completely change it. Uh, as you can see there, I've just completely changed. I've changed all of them, obviously, because I duplicated on the timeline rather than duplicating in media. But I'm just showing that you can actually... Uh, you can actually um, seed these quite easily. And uh, even though they're a bit jaggy and so on, when you zoom in, they're still quite effective simply because broken glass is a bit jaggy. So uh, quick procedural glass bullet holes. I hope you enjoyed the, tu the tutorial. Uh, remember to press subscribe. You can also find Tushka on Facebook. Um, see you on the next tutorial.